Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we're looking at Strange Tales number one from Marvel Knights. This is one of three, um, and this is by a bunch of indie artists. So, uh, Marvel Knights was kind of cool because they brought in a lot of cool artists, and like, you know, they did Ghost Rider and Punisher, and you know, you have freaking Bernie Wrightson doing Punisher, and uh, Joe Quesada and Kevin Smith on Daredevil, Mark Texiera on Ghost Rider. So, um, who else? Black Panther was pretty cool by them. So they were doing a lot of cool books and they did this mini series where they brought in a bunch of underground indie artists, um, to, um, do this sort of, uh, anthology book. And it reads very much like an indie comic and it's cool. It totally reminds me of my brother. I'm not super familiar with a bunch of indie books and, um, other ones I was or underground, I definitely say my brother introduced me to them, you know, the likes of Peter Baggy and Robert Crumb and um, people like that. So this cover is by Paul Pope and I was thinking, I struggle to call Paul Pope like an indie artist or underground because he's done a lot of really commercial projects like Batman Year 100 and Heavy Liquids, so whatever, but I really like his style. Um, there's an anthology called Wednesday Comics, and he did this, like, uh, sci-fi sort of 50s, 60s, what was it? You guys remember? Anyway, it was really cool. But this cover is very cool by him. It's fun to see him do some Marvel work, and everyone looks super cool. He has this sort of Kirby look to me anyway, so I think it lends itself well to the Marvel characters. And I love that just as part of the aesthetic, that might be a great stain but um, just like how it's not bright white and they made it kind of dingy to give it look sort of like a, you know, an old book kind of look to it. This is crazy. Um, I love it. It's such a sign of the times. You can tell this uh, came out before, uh, you know, social, people started getting more socially conscious in recent years as the watchers like totally peeping on this woman in the shower. You can see his tidy whiteies. This is by, who is this by? uh Nick Bertozzi so you guys probably know more than I do I don't know this is Paul Pope doing the Inhumans I think it is so cool I love his art such a great style um could be Jose Villarubia coloring that which uh I love his style too it's a great like muted palette like um he always knows like really brings a lot to the to the projects that he works on. This is so much fun. This is so Kirby with all this stuff, but like, of course it's Paul Pope. So it has this great indie aesthetic going on with the, I don't know, the the way the lettering looks to hand lettered and the panels are so close together with the, the gutters being so small. That definitely speaks indie to me, but it's fun. Analyst, An 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 Annihilist, Annihilist. I like that, the way that sounds. So we're gonna go with Annihilus for, you know, the green dude who, this is a cool, like, um, it's funny cause a lot of this art reminds me, like I can see it in my friend's notebooks in high school and art class. And although I was usually just the only artist and um, didn't really meet a lot of other artists until I got older. And it's so much fun to like, look at people's uh, sketchbooks and, um, drawn by Molly Crabapple. And she's bringing this like really weird Victorian thing, but I think this is She-Hulk. And I think that's just so fantastic. I love this like interpretation of She-Hulk. Like this is a lot of fun. And once again, we have the coloring of the pages, how it's kind of dark like that. That's something that Ed Piscor does in his work to give it sort of a vintage worn in, I don't know, old comic book look effect. This is fun, sort of, uh, C.B. Sobolski, like, uh, was, brought this together, or, uh, translated it, and it's, uh, Junko Mizuno, and this is very, very, like, super manga, very anime, Japan animation, or whatever you want to call it, but it's fun, I mean, obviously, Spider-Man is definitely one of those characters who lends himself to different aesthetics and different situations. And I think that's part of the huge success of Spider-Verse. I love that they introduced all those different looking Spider-Men and it was so much fun. This is really cute, fun art. This is very like, hello kitty to me, 
which is fun. My sister loves Hello Kitty, so I kind of grew up with it. This is cool, Doctor Strange by Dash Shaw. Very, very notebook art, right? Very art class look. Very like indie, but it's so cool. I love to, you know, we know what that Marvel house style looks like. We know what, you know, I don't know, Michael Goldman, Paul Smith can bring to it. And of course they're freaking amazing. So it's fun to just see kind of this out, out there ex perspective. James Kochalka, this is kind of fun. I mean, very rudimentary art here, but I'm sure there's genius behind it or else he wouldn't be here, right? <clears throat> Marvel's Most Embarrassing Moments by Johnny Ryan. <laughs> Namor loses a bet and get, has to get breast implants. How random. This one's kind of funny. Wolverine has an accident while picking a wedgie. You know, that's funny. That's such a, like, real-world kind of slice of life um, look at things. It's like, I mean, could you imagine the emergency room stories of mutants? <laughs> it's like, it's hard enough being a human and growing up without, I don't know, swallowing a, uh, you know, a pool ball on a dare or something. I don't know. Like, whatever stupid people do. I mean, if you had mutant powers, it would be tenfold. This one's cool to me. I just love this. This like captures the essence of Namor so well. And I don't know if this is like tracings or even just cut out of old like Namor clips, but I just love it. It's like such a M. Kupperman, whoever that is. <clears throat> and this is Peter Baggy. This is what I know, like, and I'm familiar with as far as indie. Like I think Hate was the book my brother read and I, you know, I did, probably didn't keep up with it religiously, but I read them from time to time, and I always thought they were hilarious. But, you know, my money was invested in traditional superhero comics, so when this came along, it was kind of great to get the best of both worlds. So if you're fans of, you know, like, underground comics or just, like, the Marvel Universe and want to see a fun spin on it, I recommend this series completely. Modoc, he seems super popular now, right? This is hilarious. I love the, see, this is what I love about indie artists. And this is uh, uh, why they're so amazing. It's like, this is just a one page off and just like the investment and all this like hatching. And I don't know if they're using a ballpoint pen or a crow quill or whatever, but it's just so much detail and so much thought went into this. And, you know, some mainstream artists don't even put this much effort into backgrounds. So I appreciate that. I kind of like these one pages, one page stories. It's a great gags. It's a great um, showcase of storytelling. And I think that you could learn a lot from that. Like the, um, you know, like the sort of like an Alex Toth uh, perspective or point of view, the um, economy of lying is what I say, you know, like the, that's the most powerful comic book tellers can get, you know, the most out of a single gesture or out of a single line. This one's fun. This is very like Sunday funnies and he's never been in a bar fight. So he has to convince Doc Ock to go to a bar and then fight him in the bar so he can man up in that regard. Hilarious. Like, and it took four pages to tell that. Anyway, so I don't know if I have the next one or not, but I'll do a follow-up if I do, because that was a lot of fun. Strange Tales, totally cool. Indie artists, um, Peter Baggy, Paul Pope, um, James Chachalka, totally worth checking out. Um, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, hit like, share my content, and I'll bring you some more soon. All right, thanks guys.